Yesterday, I was kind of skimming through um, the autobiography Born to Rebel um, by Benjamin E. Mays, the, the president of Morehouse College, mm-hmm. mentor to Martin Luther King Jr. And I was skimming through it and I was struck when he said, growing up in the South as a young boy, he walked around with a perpetual fear of being lynched. Mm-hmm. It wasn't long ago, I was walking across my school campus and I thought, and, and I saw this, uh, this, it was like uh, campus police and they were driving by in their police car. Mm-hmm. And I'm walking by and I'm thinking, I am not intimidated by the person in that, in that vehicle at all. Mm-hmm. I have never seen a police officer and thought, my life is in danger. Mm. Yet you have a story where you're sitting in your driveway and because of what's happened, uh, not over the past few years, but just historically, mm-hmm. right, in America... And you, you were scared for your life. Do you, yeah. want, do you want to share about that sure, a little bit? Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I can probably tell you about 50 stories. <laughs> it's so funny. Yesterday, uh, we were driving, and we, and we got to, uh, I actually got to do a concert at a black church in Chicago um, yesterday. Uh, yeah, yesterday. Um, and it, actually, it's not often that I get invited to, to, to black churches to do, to do ministry. And, um, and I, 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 I cherish those times because I, it's, it's a different set of things that they're thinking about, bro. Mm-hmm. Like. Like the, what they're trying to accomplish for the people in their congregation is often completely disconnected to what's happening in the cultural war. Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I, 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 I was getting my driver um, was a seven, 75 year old brother and um, black black man in, in the north. And, and I started to talk to him about what's your experience been like. One of the first things out of his mouth was for y'all who think that the south is where <laughs> where racism is. <laughs> You got another thing coming. He told he told us that you ever King heard of Boston. He said he was there. He basically, when King came up to speak in Chicago, it said that he that the, the worst racism racism he's ever seen. He said he was never more f- afraid from his life when he was in the North. He said that he felt less fear in Mississippi. Wow, that's what, that's wow. what the driver told me yesterday. And uh, and it's funny. And I, I, as I was talking, Mo, my drummer, hopped in and said, "Yeah, man." He said, "Man, I've been beat up by the police twice." I was like, "Why haven't we talked wow. about this?" Right? Why have you? Yeah, like why? He said, "Yeah, I did a show with Propaganda, and I was driving uh, to the airport. I got pulled over, and he slammed me on the ground. He put uh, he uh, took out a baton and uh, went to hit me with it. But another police officer showed up and uh, um, stopped him." And uh, and and when the uh, and and said, "Hey, I'm sorry that this guy did this to you. He shouldn't have done that. Um, hey, you, you're you're free to go." The other police officer walked up to him and said, "Hey, I was just about to kill you." That's what the dude said to him before wow. before he left. That was one of two. Tripoli, you know, one, yeah. one of my favorite people in the world, slammed on it at his concert. At his concert, it's at not his, funny. His, Sometimes you just gotta laugh. No, you have to laugh to keep from crying. <laughs> I'm at my I'm concert. At my show wow. gospel gospel center to concert. talk about Jesus, and I'm here. We had a project called Man Up that was trying to teach people to submit to authority. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make your job easier, brother. Yeah. I actually had that conversation with a police officer one time. Wow. He spazzed on me at a air, in an airport, man. I asked a question, and he just went crazy on me. And I, at that point, it was like caution to the wind. Yeah. I said, do you know that I'm, I am out here trying to – you make my job harder. How am I to disciple young black men and women to see – that there's actually a future, that, that there's actually, there's, there's a, a, a symbiotic future for us between the police officers. How, how do we even get to that? When here I am posing no threat to you, but you feel so threatened by me. And I remember when he saw my, my he said, do you have any, ta-? I had to, I'm in the airport, bro. I had a lighter with me that went through security. It was a, it was a lighter. It, Cause I had this little contraption I was using on stage that made fire or whatever. But anyways, and he's, I, I got to identify my, my, my record and, and, and have, and, and I, if, do I have a, I, didn't have, I don't have a record, but do I have a record? Do I have any tattoos? Uh, basically, uh, you know, if I have any gang affiliation, I'm saying, what's it? Why are you doing this to me? Mm. Why are you doing this to me, bro? I, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to live. I'm just trying to live, bro. Why, why, why are you doing this to me, man? And then when he saw that my tattoo was Romans 116 and he saw that I was a believer, he saw me as a Christian <laughs> and his whole, Demeanor, demeanor changed towards me. Now, now he's me, human. Now, <laughs> now let me say now this. Now you're not a threat. 
I have met some wonderful police officers. Tampa PD is among one of the stalwart police departments in the in the state. Just good good people. That the police chief led a lot of the protests. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, in it was, it was at, at many. I think he was at one of the ones. Was him he at and, one that we him were at? and the mayor were at protests this summer. Yeah, yeah. So there 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 is this tension between supporting police officers, seeing them as uh, essential to um, you know uh, the, the the sort of. Um, you know, uh, order of the society, but then also saying that there's serious reform that needs to be made. Um, Being honest about both, even being honest about the numbers. Police brutality is not simply a black problem, (laughs) even though it all often expresses itself there in a majority way. There are tons of stories of individuals who are not black sharing in the problem that is modern day policing because there does need to be reform. There does need to be better training. There does need to be more support. We talked about how police officers are oftentimes work in a career where there's the highest suicide, highest divorce, highest drug abuse, and we're not supporting them in those things. There actually does need to be improvements for their own sanity and safety and it, outside of their policing the communities. All of that needs to be talked about when we engage these things, but it gets punted to the side mm. when y'all are sounding like those people that basically want to, you know, they talked about the whole frying, um, the whole pigs in the blanket thing and, and defund the police and, and, and all these things that not all of us are on the same page about, but we are on the same page about this. There needs to be change. Mm-hmm. Can you join me in that alone? But anyways, I'm, I'm, I'm getting off on a tangent, but the point that I, that I wanted to make is that there is indeed these experiences that that we have i've had my own i won't i won't go into the details but i was in my own driveway on a on a conversation facetime with joseph solomon and was 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 accused of a uh, uh, suspected of committing a crime sitting in my driveway mm. and i again i'm sitting back and i'm watching you ride past all my other neighbors who look like they should be here mm. and that's mm-hmm. been my experience i find myself oftentimes whether it's at the airport at a hotel at a skybox at a at a, at a baseball game or right. a football game where it's like you should not be here that there's this kind of you're out of place and here's the thing a lot of us feel like we're out of place oh man mm. We do talk about it. So, so what? Yeah, stuff that stuff that people don't even understand. Yes. Like you don't even understand me walking through Passion six, seven years ago, yeah. seeing another black dude, and we like, yo, yo, hey, hey. There's like a. But, 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 I'm, I'm being honest. Yeah, yeah. I don't think some of my white brothers and sisters in Christ understand. There's literally like a secret communication, like code, like yo, we yes. in here. I see you. Mm. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Because we know. Yeah. That we are minorities here, and we feel it. I mean, I think about what he said about the president of Moore House. I, it, I I do feel like by God's grace I am I am improving in this to be honest and if, I know you probably have some questions for us so you can grace sorry, those yeah, things we, up but let me just say this last thing I spent years of my life bro changing the way I talk so that I could sound more adjacent mm-hmm. to whiteness I was called a coconut black on the outside white on the inside I was called an Oreo white on the inside black on the outside mm-hmm. because of the way I talked and, and because I was given to, to to academics and stuff like that these are things that are seen as white right and then we begin to hurt each other internalize that there's something better or at least threatening about the things that we give to white culture bro and i even think about how the, the way our, our our sisters for example Corey porter who will be on Southside rabbi in the future this brilliant sister uh who's doing all kind of advocacy work in africa but she told this story about when she that she realized that she could not wipe her blackness off mm. she asked her light-skinned friend hey how did you get light skin because if i could get light skin then i can get then mm. the, the guys will like me yeah you and th- said, and you and think six-year-olds sh- are reading critical race theory? Yeah, this is where they're getting are it from. Yes, exactly. Come on, so man. what I'm saying is that we have a problem. Mm-hmm. We have a problem. Last thing I'm going to say. I, I know I keep saying that. This is the last thing I'm about to pass. <laughs> a study came out last August, bro. Babies. The most neutral place you can be is babies. You can't say that they have internalized racism. You can't say that they have done something in any way to be project themselves as victims. But they did a study on the, the out, the, basically the survival rate of black and white babies. Mm. In that study, they showed that black babies are three times more likely to die in infancy from a lack of care from their doctors if their doctor's white. Wow. But if you take a white baby with a black doctor, 
They have the exact same chance of survival, which it stays flat, if they have a black do- doctor or a white doctor. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. they adjust it for all kind of variables. They adjust it for the variables. Because you can tell, well, what about this? What about that? They, had, they looked at all of this. Now, that does not prove... Uh, without a shadow of a doubt that 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 there's nothing but racism happening there. I'm sure that they're going to do more study and find some factors, but you, you, you certainly have to say that something's going on there and it seems to be racial, okay? Right. And listen, I know that the, 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 the thing that is lobbied, that's lodged against a lot of people to talk about these things is that, that what you all believe is that all out, outcome, I just heard it yesterday, any kind of disparity in outcome automatically means racism. I don't know anybody that believes that. Yeah. I don't know anybody in our circle, Christian or not, anybody that is in our circle that's Christian or outside of our circle that thinks that if there's a disparity between black people and white people, it's got to be and racism. you can even find critical race theorists who have said that. That, For sure. that, that, that there's that It's not always race. There's other factors there's that There's things be that are far more complicated. Yeah, okay? it's crazy. That, and it's obviously not talking about the fact that you're uh, a... That, that you, I may be 6'2 and better at basketball than you are because I'm better at basketball. There's a disparity there. It must be right. Mm. No, this is the thing. The most of the things that y'all think is crazy, most reasonable people think is crazy as well. But what we're talking about is that there's something that the outcomes can teach you. And no one's asking for equality of outcomes. We'll never achieve that. But we want people to have the same chances at survival. The same opportunity that the black baby and the white baby both share the exact same chances of living in this world. And if that's not there, we should at the very least say that there is a disparity that should not be there. Mm. It should not be there. It should not be that black people are three times more likely to, to die from COVID. It should not be that I can go down to Bayfront Hospital in the south side of St. Petersburg and be able to basically track the, the trajectory of that baby given their, their social uh, standings because I know what, what, kinder, what preschool they'll be in and what kindergarten they'll be in. And then, and, and then this is the outcome. That, that should not be the case. Mm. Compassion Love says that in some way, some fashion, we want people to be eating deeply in the American dream, which mm. is giving everyone the chance to pursue life, liberty, yeah. and justice. So anyways.